Hi everybody, so today we're going to be looking at how to do journal entries. This is basically the first step of our fundamentals of accounting and in our accounting cycle. The reference point that we're going to be using is Kimmel, Wigent and Chiesos Financial and Managerial Accounting. So real quick, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay posted with our accounting and finance updates and comment below if you need help with any additional accounting or finance resources. Um, so the question that we're going to work on comes from problem set B from the book, that's chapter number two. We're looking at problem 2-1B. And in this particular question, we are going to be working on journal entries and specifically how to make journal entries under certain transactions or certain circumstances. And so a journal layout basically uh, presents you with a certain date, then you've got a journal entry using certain account titles. You'll always have a debit column and a credit column that you have to keep in check. And remember to keep in mind the foundations of your T-accounts, the way that your accounts will behave um, based on the sort of account that they are classified as. So when an asset increases, it will be debited. And when an asset decreases, it will be credited. And because assets and liabilities behave oppositely, when a liability increases, it will be credited. And similarly, when a liability decreases, it will be debited. And um, same for equity. So when an equity increases, it will be credited but when equity decreases it'll be debited and same for revenue because remember revenue is used to create our uh, retained earnings which is a part of equity so it'll behave the exact same way now remember that revenue is a temporary account essentially it closes at the end of the year so the revenue account will only increase and against this the other temporary account of expense will only increase on the debit side and the dividends that are paid will all so only increase on the debit side and so this is essentially what you need to remember the top three assets liabilities and equity are your permanent accounts and revenues expenses and your dividends are your temporary accounts and this is how we debit and we credit them based on their increasing and decreasing nature so going back to 2-1b the question says, Shore Park Disc Golf Course was opened on Mar March 1st by Bill Arnsdorf. The following selected events and transactions occurred during March. So on March 1st, we're going to go ahead and put in a date over there, March 1st. Invested $60,000 cash in the business in exchange for common stock. Whenever we invest cash into a business in exchange for common stock, that is cash, the asset is going to be debited, and common stock, the equity is to be credited. Sorry, common stock. Okay. In this particular case, because you invested $60,000 or Bill invested $60,000, we'll debit $60,000 and we will credit $60,000. Now what you will see along the way is that the same amount that we debit is the exact same amount that we will credit and it is meant to be done that way so that your double entry accounting system identifies the same balances for all of your debits and your credits. Moving on to the next entry on the 3rd of March. Purchase Lee's golf land for $38,000 cash. Price consists of land, $23,000, shed, $9,000, and equipment, $6,000. So whenever we purchase an asset in exchange for an asset, that basically means that one asset is going to increase. The asset increasing is our land, shed, and equipment. We want to essentially treat the three of them separately because they behave differently even as assets. So we'll identify land. Asset increasing is to be debited. So land was acquired for $23,000. Sorry, 23,000. And right there is the power of the zero. So $23,000, not 2300 The shed, which will count as a part of your buildings. And how do I know to use the buildings account? Because if you see right over here, the account title given to us over here is buildings. So buildings was acquired for $9,000. And lastly, equipment was acquired for equipment was acquired for six thousand dollars now all three of these assets are increasing which is why they are debiting once again if you look at the characteristics of your accounts an asset increasing is to be debited so when we come back over here that also means that we purchased this asset against another asset that was cash so that asset is decreasing when an asset decreases we will credit it so we'll credit thirty eight thousand dollars into our cash account on the fifth of march 
advertised the opening of the driving range and mini golf course paying advertising expenses of $1,600. So when we look at our accounts, we see immediately that we ha are noting an advertising expense and against that we are paying it off right away. So that means cash will be credited. An expense will always be debited and cash, the decreasing asset, will be credited. So expense is to be debited and the decreasing asset is to be credited. In this case, we paid how much for advertising? We paid $1,600 for advertising so 1600 debit and 1600 credit on the 6th of march we paid cash $2,400 for a one-year insurance policy. So the insurance policy that we're getting will come under the account of a prepaid insurance listed right there in our list. So prepaid insurance, this asset is increasing, it'll be debited by uh, $2,400 and against this because we paid for it immediately our cash account will be credited by twenty four hundred dollars on the 10th of march we purchased golf discs and other equipment for a thousand and fifty from part and company payable in 30 days so this means that we acquired some sort of equipment to be used on the golf course and we will pay for it later so the equipment the asset that is increasing will be our equipment and this will be uh, debited for a thousand and fifty and against this the liability is increasing and that liability to our suppliers comes under the title of an accounts payable so that'll be credited for a thousand and fifty so once again when an asset increases it is to be debited and when a liability increases it is to be credited and that is the entire situation that we have happening here on the 18th of march we have received $340 in cash for golf fees earned. This basically means that the service you were meant to provide was what you provided. And so you've earned cash and asset is increasing against a revenue um, revenue earned. So cash to service revenue. And the amount that we've earned is $340. So $340 debit and $340 credit. On the 19th of March, we sold 100 coupon books for $18 each. Just a quick calculation over there. We'll come back to this. Each book contains four coupons that enable the holder to play one round of disc golf. Now, the interesting thing over there is that you have received funds. That's an increase of an asset. So we received cash. There's no doubt that that'll be debited. But against that particular receiving of cash, you've not actually provided any service, which increases your liability. The liability is the provision of that service in the future, which means that the account that we're looking at is an unearned service revenue account. And so whenever a liability increases, it is to be credited. So we have cash debit to unearned service revenue credit. The amount that we're considering over here will be 100 coupon books for $18 each. The number of coupons in each book is irrelevant because we have a total price of a book. So that means $1,800 deb uh, generated in cash. So $1,800 received in cash and $1,800 liability that still stands over your head. On the 25th of March, declared and paid an $800 cash dividend. Now, the interesting thing over here is when you pay the dividend to your employ to your ca st sorry, stakeholders, your stockholders, um, that means that it also generate a cash outflow. Going back to our basics, remember a dividend will always be debited. So that means that your dividend account is to be debited. And against this, the decrease of the asset cash is to be credited. And we paid a total of $800 in dividends. So there we go. Then on the 30th of March, we have just one moment. Let's just go ahead and make sure that you don't have to. lose the top row there okay so on the 30th of march we want to go ahead and move that up just a little bit so it's easier for us to see on the 30th of march we paid salaries of 250 dollars and whenever you pay salaries you identify an expense a salaries and wages expense again how do we know that we'd use this account we have the account right here provided for us salaries and wages expense all expenses are always to be debited so salaries and wages expense and because we've deb we have already paid for it so it'll be credited to cash the decrease 
decreasing asset. We pay $250 in salaries, so $250 debit and $250 credit to cash. Again, on the 30th of March, we paid Pardon Company in full. And if we look back real quick, we owed Pardon Company for the supplies that we got from them. So that was 1050 And if you look at your entry over there, we had an accounts payable, the increase of liability. That specific liability will now decrease. So accounts payable will be debited by 1015 And because you've made the cash payment against it, we will credit cash by 1050 then on the 31st of March, that's our last entry for this particular problem, we received $200 cash for fees earned. This basically means that we've earned an asset against a service provided. So cash will be debited for $200 and service revenue will be credited for $200. And because the instructions only indicate the journalizing of these transactions, we are done with problem 2-1B. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe and drop into the comments any additional resources you might need help with. And uh, we'll see you for the next problem. Thank you very much.